This tutorial explains how to draw a histogram with different colors using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you two examples and both of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two to three of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data contains only one column, which is called X, and this column contains random numeric values. Now, if we want to draw these data using the basic installation of the R programming language, we have to apply the hist function, as you can see in line five of the code. And in this line of code, I'm applying this function to our data frame column X. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom right of RStudio that a new histogram has been created. Now, if we want to add certain colors to certain ranges of this histogram, then we first need to extract the breaks of our histogram bars. And we can do that as you can see in line seven of the code. So in this line of code, I'm again applying the histogram function to our data frame column. And then I'm extracting the breaks of the bars from this output and I'm storing the output in a new data object, which is called my breaks. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object called my breaks is appearing. And we can print this data object to the RStudio console by running line eight. And then you can see that we have created a data object containing all the breaks of the different bars. Now in the next step, we have to define the colors that we want to use for each bar in our histogram. And we can do that as you can see in lines 10 to 12. So in these lines of code, I'm creating a new data object, which is called my colors. And then I'm adding to this a vector of colors, which has the same length as our vector of breaks. So if you run line 10 of the code, such a vector is created. And then in lines 11 and 12, I'm inserting different colors depending on the value of the break. So if you run lines 10 to 12 of the code, our my colors vector is updated. And if you run line 13 of the code, you can see how this vector looks like. And as you can see, we have created a vector with the same length as our vector with the breaks. And this vector contains hex color codes for each bar of our histogram. So in the next step, we can once again apply the hist function to our data frame column. But then we also need to set the breaks of our histogram to be equal to our vector of breaks. And we need to set the call argument to be equal to our vector of colors. So if you run lines 15 to 17 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our histogram is updated. And as you can see this time, this histogram is shown in three different colors and each of the colors corresponds to one range that we have specified before. So in this first example, I have explained how to use base R to create a histogram with different colors. However, it's also possible to use the ggplot2 package for this task. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 19 of the code. So if we want to draw a ggplot2 histogram, we first need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 19 and 20 of the code. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 20. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package. However, before we can draw our data, we first need to specify the groups in our data that should correspond to the color ranges that we want to use. And for this, we are creating a new data object, which is called my groups. And this data object should contain different grouping values depending on the color range that we want to use. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called my groups. And this data object has the same length as the number of rows in our data. And each of the elements of this vector defines the group, or in other words, the color that we want to use for these data. Then in the next step, we have to combine this vector of groups with our original data set 
So we can do that as you can see in lines 26 and 27. And in these lines of code, I'm creating a new data frame, which contains our original data frame column and our group indicator. So if you run lines 26 and 27 of the code, you can see that a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data GGP. And if you click on this data object, a new window is opened. And as you can see, this data frame contains our column X and our group indicator. So in the next step, I will draw our histogram based on this new data frame data GGP. And I will draw this using the ggplot function and the geom histogram function. So if you run lines 29 and 30 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new plot object is appearing, which is called ggp. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 31 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new histogram with this typical ggplot2 style. And you can also see that the histogram is divided into three different color ranges. And on top of that, you can also see that on the right side of the plot, a legend is shown, which is identifying the different groups in our histogram. So in this example, I have explained how to draw a ggplot2 histogram with the default color settings. However, it's also possible to change the colors that we want to use in our histogram manually. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines 33 to 36 of the code. So in line 33, I'm first specifying the GGP plot object that we have created before. And then I'm adding on top of this the scale fill manual function. And within this function, I'm specifying different color codes for each of the ranges that we are using in our histogram. So if you run lines 33 to 36 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated. And this time we have used manually specified color codes. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.